Hello everybody, welcome back to the Hot Glass I have got such a cool person to tell you about today. What is that? What I'm saying? You can't understand what I'm saying? Well, that's because I have a silver spoon in my mouth. I don't know if you've ever heard of that before, but a person with a silver spoon in their mouth means that they were born rich and with privilege. The artist that I want to tell you about today was born with a silver spoon in her mouth. Yes, she was rich and she was very privileged. And have I got a story for you. I want to tell you about this little girl. She was born about 150 years ago in the city of London, which is located in England. Her name was Beatrix, Beatrix Potter. And her parents were very, very wealthy. They had so much money that they spent most of their time trying to host a party, getting ready for a party, or getting ready to go to a party. The Potters had hired a governess to look after little Beatrix. A governess is a lady that will come in the house and she'll live there and she will be the one that looks after the children. That's her whole job. She feeds them, she dresses them, she educates them, she makes sure that they're playing and having fun and staying healthy. And so her parents hired this lady to come and do that. And the children, if you had a governess, very seldom saw their parents. They might see them in the evening to say goodnight or possibly have a meal with them if the parents weren't going off to some party somewhere. Beatrix spent very little time with her mom and dad, but in the little time that she spent with them, she really liked spending time with her father. He was so encouraging and very, very loving. Mrs. Potter had given the governess some very strict rules about Beatrix. She did not want Beatrix playing with other children. She was afraid that those children would be a bad influence on her. She also wanted Beatrix and her younger brother Bertram to always be very clean and put together. Their clothes were to have no dirt on them at all. And she was very concerned about germs. Beatrix and Bertram had a great time playing together. They enjoyed each other's company, probably because that's all they had to play with was each other. One of their favorite times was when the family would go on holiday. The father would rent a castle, yes, a whole castle up in the Lake District, which was in the northern part of England. And they would spend weeks and weeks there. Now, because the family was very wealthy and they were going to be living in a castle, of course, the governess came and the maids came and the valet came and the footman came and the butler came and also the chef. There was a bunch of people that came with them on their holiday. Beatrix and Bertram especially loved this time because the countryside was beautiful. It was breathtaking. There was hills and fells and ponds and creeks to play in. Of course, they had to be very careful not to get dirty. They were always running through the woods, collecting little creatures, even sometimes plants. And both of them loved to draw. So they would gather these little creatures and bring them back home. And there in their room, they would study them and they would draw pictures of them. They actually made these creatures their pets. At any given time, there might be a mouse or a hedgehog. At one point, they even had two bats that they kept in a birdcage. They might have a few bees and would often find caterpillars she loved sketching her pet dog, her favorite pet dog, Kip. But one of her favorite pets was her rabbit. His name was Benjamin Bouncer. Not only would Beatrix and Bertram sketch pictures of their pets, they also liked to sketch pictures of the plant life that they saw growing all around them when they would go on these adventures. Beatrix became quite good at sketching these plants and also using her watercolors to color them. She loved all the fine details that she could find in these specimens. One of her favorite type of plant was fungi. 
Here are some of the pictures that she painted of mushrooms. As she got older, into her teen years, these paintings began to get better and better and better. They were so good, meaning they were so detailed, perfectly detailed, and colored perfectly that some of the colleges and universities in England would use her paintings to teach other people about plants and about fungi. Even as she got older, she still loved having pets around her. When she no longer had Benjamin Bouncer, she got another rabbit and she named him Peter Piper. As an adult, Beatrix still kept in touch with her governess. One of her favorites was a governess by the name of Annie. When Annie came to work for the Potter family, she was only three years older than Beatrix, believe it or not. But she taught Beatrix quite a lot and really became a good friend, was a good encourager. Well, years after Annie had left the home when Beatrix no longer needed a governess, Beatrix found out that Annie's son, Noel, was very sick. He had a sickness called scarlet fever. It was really kind of rough on the little guy. He was only five years old at the time. And so Beatrix began to write him letters to try to cheer him up. Often she would put a sketch of a little animal or maybe of a boat or a tree, something for him to look at when he read her letters. I'd like to read the very beginning of one very important letter that she sent to the young boy, Noel. It starts like this. My dear Noel, I don't know what to write to you, so I should tell you a story about four little rabbits whose names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. The story in the letter goes on to tell about all the adventures of these four little rabbits. When Noel read it and when Annie read it, they loved it. Noel wanted more stories. It was captivating. And Annie encouraged her to rewrite the letter into a book form, putting the story next to little pictures. She thought it would be a huge success. And so Beatrix decided to do that. She rewrote the story and put little pictures beside each one. And then she decided to make a book out of them. She published them herself. And she began to give these little books out to all of her friends. Well, when her friends read the books, they too loved it, especially their children loved it. They encouraged her to go to a publisher. Let one of these big companies take this book and make a lot of copies so that a lot of kids would be able to read about these four little rabbits. She took the copy that she had made herself to one of the bigger publishing companies in London. When the publisher looked at the book, he wasn't that excited about it. He felt like the story was okay, but the pictures were just sketches in black and white. He really wanted there to be color in her artwork. Well, Beatrix did not want to add color to her pictures. She knew that the watercolors that she would use would be bright and vibrant. And she knew that the printing press would not have the same great colors. So she didn't want to ruin her book with the printing press's colors. Well, the publisher told her that he would work very, very hard to make sure that the printing looked as colorful as her watercolors. And so she agreed to add color to her pictures. When the book was hot off the presses, as they say, Beatrice looked at it and she loved it. And the publisher loved it. And even more importantly, People and children really loved it. As soon as the little books would go on the shelves, they would get bought up in an instant. Of course, the publisher loved it because he was making money along with Beatrix. He insisted that she write a few more. Beatrix, do you have any more fun little stories locked up in your head somewhere? And of course she did. She had lived her whole life somewhat in a magical fairyland with all of her little pets and creatures. And so she continued to write. This was her next book. It was called 
the tale of Squirrel Nutkin, and then came the tailor of Gloucester, followed by the tale of Benjamin Bunny. She got that idea from Benjamin Bouncer, her first little rabbit. She began to make a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money. The books were selling so well. She missed the northern part of England, that lake district that she and her family used to visit. She realized that she had made enough money to be able to move out of London and live up in the lake district. She bought a farm called Hilltop Farms that was right near the Windermere Lake. Oh, it was beautiful. And what she loved most was that this farm wasn't just like a pretend farm. It was a real working farm with real animals. They had sheep and cows, a few pigs and some chickens. She loved being back up in that area that had such great memories of her growing up. She got to be out in nature and in the country all the time. And with all of that beautiful landscape around her, with all of the really fun animals that were around her, her imagination soared and she continued to write books. She wrote 23 stories or 23 tales in all. She loved the farming life also. It appears that she loved it as much as she loved writing. I can say that because as we look at her life, we see that the older she got, the fewer stories she wrote and the more land she began to buy. She loved to raise farm animals, especially sheep. They were her pride and joy. She acquired so many sheep and they were thoroughbreds. People came from far and wide to see Beatrix Potter's sheep. She won a lot of prizes. And the older she got, people began to know her more as Beatrix Potter, the sheep owner, than they did as Beatrix Potter, the author and the illustrator. In all, Beatrix had purchased over 4,000 acres of farmland, and she was quite the farmer. In 1943, at the age of 77, Beatrix Potter died. After her death, the world found out that she gave a very big gift to the country of England. She had willed or left behind her land, her livestock, especially her sheep, and even the rights, the money for all of her books to the National Trust. The National Trust is a group of people, a foundation that has come together to help preserve things, land, to look natural, to be the way they were always supposed to be. That was something that was very dear to Beatrix Potter. She bought a lot of the land in the Lake District because she didn't want it to change. She didn't want a lot of tourists to come in and tear it up. She wanted it to stay natural. And so she left it to the National Trust and said, please take care of all of this land that I've owned. Make sure that the sheep stay healthy and you can use the money that my books make to help you do that. That was a huge gift. And if you ever get a chance to go to England, you definitely need to go up to that part of the country. It's in the northern part. Again, it's called the Lake District. It's in the town of Windermere. I've been there and it's breathtaking. It's beautiful. I even took a little canoe ride on the lake there. But they've taken her farmhouse called Hilltop and they've made it into a museum. And it is almost magical. They have taken the inside of her house and it's almost like you're walking into the woods and they've got little figures of Peter Rabbit and Jemima Puddle Duck and all of her other little creatures, Benjamin Bunny, in little scenes that come right out of the tales in her book. It is so much fun to go and see.
Beatrix Potter was a woman who never had a formal education, but she embraced learning. She loved nature, both animal and plant. She had an unlimited imagination and brought her sketches to life. She was a great businesswoman who invested her money wisely and followed her dream, all in a time when culture said that as a woman, she wasn't capable. I think what I admire most is her strength and her courage. Thank you for joining me here in the High Gatsby studio, and I look forward to seeing you again as we study more incredible artists. And remember, stay safe and stay healthy.